Welcome friends, welcome to episode two of our cola series. In the last episode, we made um, what is purported to be the 1886 Pemberton Coca-Cola recipe, uh, written in his own handwriting in his ledger. Um, and I got a lot of feedback online about that recipe. And most of it was from people that didn't quite understand what was going on. Um, a lot of people sort of expect that uh, the cocaine that's in Coca-Cola or was in Coca-Cola at that time was put in by some guy, you know, pouring a bag of white powdery purified cocaine in, which wasn't the case. Um, they were using an extract of the coca leaf at that point, but it wasn't pure cocaine. It was sort of a mix between the botanical bittering compounds and the alkaloids, but not pure cocaine. So, um, thank you everybody for pointing out that I didn't use cocaine. Um, I didn't use cocaine because it's not in the recipe. The second group of people were all about the cola nut. And um, by that point in the recipe, cola nut wasn't used in Coca-Cola. He just wanted straight caffeine. He didn't want the flavor. He only wanted the hit of caffeine. So he was only using citrate of caffeine, which is pure caffeine. Um, so now that we've got that out of the way, we're going to move on and we're going to start playing with some of the things that we found out when we made that recipe and we're going to start honing it in and we're going to turn it into Squozen Cola, um, which was one of the other top comments. People loved the word Squozen. So um, to start off, I'm still going to use the 7X mixture. I'm not going to make any changes to that, but I will probably use a different proportion of this in the final mix. So to get started, um, water in the pot. And you'll notice it's in a graduated jug, just like last time, which means I measured the water. Um, another comment that came up a lot. And we're just going to bring that up to temperature, not too hot. Um, I don't want it to boil. I just want to get it warm enough that we can mix in the sugar. Now, another comment that was brought up over and over and over again was that I should be using real cane sugar. Well, we live in Canada and this is real cane sugar. Um, that beet sugar that you get in the United States uh, doesn't happen here. Uh, dried corn sugar, not a thing here. This is real cane sugar. And I've cut the amount of sugar from the last recipe immeasurably. Um, I've taken out about 30, 35% of the sugar. And I think that's gonna be better um, for Julie and I, what we're looking for. So I'm just gonna stir this in and get it dissolved. While that's dissolving, I'm going to squeeze some limes and I'm going to up the amount of lime juice this time from last. Okay, everything has dissolved. Now, we didn't bring it up to a boil. It's just sort of barely body temperature. Enough of that. Next in is the caramel. Now, this is a commercial grade industrial caramel, um, highly concentrated. It is still just sugar. It just is in such a high concentration that it is super dark. Now, I know people out there are screaming, you're not supposed to measure over top of your... It's okay, it's just caramel. And if I get an extra milliliter in, it's not really gonna matter all that much. Um, really sweet, really, really sweet. So that goes in. Um, next in is our citric acid. Um, and I've upped the amount of citric acid from last time. I think it just needs a little bit of extra punch. The current Coca-Cola formulation uses phosphoric acid. Um, and that's something I've used in the past making beer. And I look down in the brewery and I don't have any. And I'm going to try and get some next time I go to the brew shop. Um, Julie and I brew beer. So if you want to look at our brewing channel uh, where we brew and drink beer, the link, the link. Mix that in. Now, freshly squozen lime juice. Um, I'm bumping up the lime juice from last time, uh, almost doubling it. And I think that the drink can handle it. So that goes in. Pretty cool so far. Now, vanilla. Um, a lot of people were surprised that there was vanilla as a flavor in Coke. Um, kind of surprised me a little bit too, but at the same time, vanilla is in almost 
everything at this point. Um, always has been. It's a very complex flavor. And I'm going to put more in um, just to see what happens. And again, I know you're not supposed to measure over top, but I'm pretty careful. I mean, measuring into measuring spoons is something that I do for a living. Now, the caffeine. I'm going to cut down the caffeine a lot. It was way over caffeinated last time, so... Um, I think I'm going to cut it down to that much. And now the bittering compound. And I think people overemphasized in the last video the importance of the bittering compound. Um, it doesn't really add much to the flavor. But let's give it a shot. Okay, so we'll measure this out so we can calculate how much 7x to use. Um, smells really good, and I think we've got the color this time. So, let's see how much there is. There's going to be a different amount because I've changed up the ingredients quite a bit. Two and a half liters. So I'm going to use 10 mils of 7x this time, which is two teaspoons for our American cousins. And I'm going to pour this over here because I didn't do a very good job last time. I spilled everywhere. Um, I'm still going to spill everywhere. Put that in. Immediately changes the color of the syrup. So we'll stir that in. Um, if anyone, I mean, that is so, even watered down in, in there, that is a lot, a lot of concentrated flavor. Unbelievable how concentrated that flavor is. So, now we have the syrup. Um, and I guess what I didn't explain last time that some people were missed on is that this is the sugar syrup. You mix this syrup, one part of this syrup, to five parts soda water. Um, so we're diluting this. This is a lot of pop. I think that's pretty good. So I'm going to put that in the fridge, um, cool it down, and see what Julie says when she gets home. Okay. Squoze in. So this is the one we made last time on the 1886 recipe, and this is one that I've played around with today. Okay. Squoze and cola. Oh, this is the squoze in. Squoze in. Glenn squoze and cola. So. All right. Let's see. This was last week's. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Interesting. Okay. I still need to work on, on this, I think. It's lemony. I upped the amount of, of uh, lime juice. Mm-hmm. And I don't think I should have. Now I realize that was a mistake. Yeah, but for those of us who really like lime with our cola... Yes. <laughs> so, here's, so here's the thing. I, you know? I'm... As much as this was the 1886 recipe, and I took a lot of flack for changing out one ingredient. Which, you know, technically we're not allowed to have, so um, what are you going to do? I'm not really trying with this to recreate Coke. Because I can buy a Coke. Yeah, you can create a f beverage that you really like. What do I really want in a cola, and what do I want to drink in my backyard this summer? See, I still find that one super sweet, but then I'm not the same... Yeah. I'm, I find Coke really sweet. So I dropped the sugar in this. Yeah. Um, and I think the sweetness level is now correct. I think I just need to dial back the lime juice. Lime. Yeah. See, I really like the lime, but that's just because I like... So do you, do you like that? I like the lime. Okay. I like the lime too, but I think the lime is just maybe a little bit a little too much. A little too much for you? Yeah. Okay, so that's experiment number two. We'll do it one more time. Okay. And then we'll do a full-on taste test. I'm still looking for RC Cola. Um, mm. I don't know where I'm going to find it. And yet it feels like it's so common. Like yeah. it's, It feels like it's easy to find. Like we've seen it. And yet, yeah, I'll yeah. have to get... When you go looking, you never find anything, Never find right? it. Okay. <laughs> Thanks for stopping by. Um, we'll see you again soon, and we're going to keep working on this.